<laughs> one person has seen it. It's a soundtrack of one song, except I'm doing video games. So it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. What the hell did you just say? I'm not a fan of video games. You full of shit. You understand that? You full of shit. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games. Oh my, what what do we have here? This this can't be right. Anita Sarkeesian isn't a fan of video games? What? That can't that can't be correct. That has to be that has to be doctored. That obviously is a body double that's been hired by the patriarchy to impersonate Anita and discredit her. I think MRAs are involved. I'm almost certain that men's right activists have somehow pulled this off in an attempt to undermine her struggle against the sexist forces of video games. Now that video um, is actually, that's a clip of a video. It was posted yesterday on a YouTube account called Flying Turkeys. Uh, it's the only video they have up, but uh, I'll put a link in the description. You can go check it out. It's from a lecture she gave back in 2010. Now that's a little hard to, you know, th something doesn't add up, right? Because in her Kickstarter video and all those speaking engagements uh, she's had since uh, her Kickstarter itself, she's told everybody, you know, uh, all those TV interviews, all those, um, you know, uh, conferences she's been to, all the developers she's talked to, that she's a lifelong fan of video games. In fact, I think in her Kickstarter video, let me see if I can find the clip here. Video games are so interesting and engaging and interactive. I, I'm a gamer and I enjoy games. I, I love games. I'm, I'm a, a, f a fan of games. I mean, she's a big fan of video games, except that she hates them and doesn't play them. She's not a fan of video games. She's not, uh, she had to learn a lot about them, you know, which is awkward because I, I love video games. That's my hobby. I play video games and having to learn a lot about them would not be something you would expect. Somebody who plays video games would have to fucking do. I mean, it has been gangbusters for the last, I'd say, three months. It's been one thing after the other that's come out about Anita Sarkeesian. Uh, first, we had the blog about her boyfriend and his social justice activities and his opinions on Tomb Raider back in like 2006 and the pyramid schemes that he was involved in and how Anita was connected to those schemes. Uh, we also had uh, people tracking down the footage she used in her videos that turned out to really be long plays that were mostly posted by people like Cubix55. I'll also post a link uh, in the description to his channel, which really good long plays, right? I mean, there's no, there's no problem using somebody else's footage, except in Anita's case, she didn't credit it. I mean, if you look at uh, Retsupre, they, they do uh, commentaries on video playthroughs, not like, um, you know, shitting on Let's Players, but they'll just do normal commentaries over long plays. And a good amount of those come from the Cubix 55 channel. It's a, you know, it's a community of long players that post to that. And they credit it, and they ask for permission, which is what you would normally do. She didn't do that. Uh, the other problem with her taking footage from Cubex and other people on YouTube is that, you know, she got $160,000 to go buy these games, and she didn't get her own footage, right? I mean, a capture card is what, 100 bucks, 200 bucks? I mean, uh, you know, fuck, I know, I know Marco, Armic 21 he, you know, when he puts videos out there, when he's making videos, he's capturing his own stuff. I mean, it would be bizarre for somebody who makes videos about video games not to capture their own footage. And that's what he does. That's what other people I know do. They, they capture their own footage, and if for some reason they can't actually capture it, they'll find a source, and then they'll credit the source and say, hey, this is where I got it. But, you know, here's Anita, $160,000 later, and she's captured no footage. But now that sort of makes sense. Because if you don't like video games, why in the hell would you play them? What would your motivation be for playing a video game if you don't actually like them? But this video is not about Anita. Uh, there are going to be plenty of people talking about her. They, they already have, and they're going to continue to talk about Anita. But she's just one problem. She's a symptom of a problem, actually. And that problem is what I want to talk about. Ever since this video came out, in fact, let me back up a little bit. Since the blog posts have been coming out about the stolen footage and her past and her boyfriend, um, and now with this video as well, the real problem, you know, that she's kind of helping to illustrate are not people like her. These people who have these political agendas and they, they push it into something where it doesn't belong. A, a classic example of that, if you want to look at it outside of video games, would be Atheism Plus. I, I'm sure if you talk to people in the atheist community, they can tell you what a huge fucking pain in the ass Atheism Plus is. 
right? It's this idea of, oh, we can't, we can't just have atheism. We've got to inject social justice into it. We've got to have women's lib in it and feminism and all these other things that have nothing to do with atheism. And we're going to call it atheism plus. And so you've got, you know, that's a separate example. That's kind of what's happening with video games. You've got these political commentators, you know, these people with this agenda that are, that are shoving it into games for no reason, right? And they're a problem, but what allows that to happen are the people that support them. That's what this video is about. I want to talk about these fucking retards. All right, let me, let me just give you an example before I even get into this of just the people I'm talking about. You saw the video clip at the start of this video. You, you can see the whole fucking thing on that other guy's YouTube channel. Again, look in the description. Go watch it. Right? It, it's fucking cut and dry. It's literally black and white. It's a black and white fucking video. It, there it is, verbatim, word for word, her admitting she doesn't like video games. She doesn't play video games. She's not a fucking fan of video games. That is, what more evidence could you need? I, what else could be given to you to convince you that this woman is a fucking con artist? Uh, everything is there. And yet, for some reason, it's not good enough. These are the fucking people I'm going to be talking about. And so let me let me show you the crazy world of retards. All right, P.T. Barnum said it best. There's a sucker born every minute. And my God, if he lived in this day and age, if P.T. Barnum were alive today, he would be a thousand times richer than he ever was in his own day and age. Because social justice activists on the internet are fucking retards. And you can con them out of money, and they will defend you to the death. Let me introduce you to these fucking euphoric retards. Let, let's, uh, let's cue up that circus music to accompany their retarded opinions. And let me just read off some of these brilliant uh, insights these people have after seeing the video you just saw. This is what they have to say. Well, first up, we've got Nileno. Funny how you know, guys never have to show their gamer credentials, huh? Uh, I also like the fact he linked to cries of fake gamer girls have been a many and tiresome. Way to fight the uh, patriarchy there, Nileno. Really doing your part there, you beta fucker. Next is uh, Arathane. The level of desperate vitriol accompanied by folks going to extreme lengths to deliver simple ad hominems suggests that women who stand up and say things of this nature are really hitting a nerve. You know what? If there really was nothing much to what these people say, people would just roll their eyes and forget about it. But that's not what happens. The not a real gamer slash techie slash geek slash fan slash whatever is a classic old way of dismissing women in a male-dominated niche fields. Well, Lottie fucking da Arathane. Oh, Bogart. We got a real, real smug motherfucker and just rips off a Bogart. I guess I can see that, Jeep. I don't think it damages her credibility enough to invalidate her arguments she's putting forward. I mean, for someone who doesn't like games, her videos on the subject seem accurate and informed and her arguments are reasonable. The situation was flipped several thousand times. The number of death threats she received was what you'd expect for a woman talking on the internet, which is to say an awful lot. But still, male gamers are the real victims, hmm? And all dissenting voices are silenced by the feminist mafia or something? So this invalidates all of her arguments or justifies the avalanche of Eflua poured over her since she dared to criticize video games? Real, real good, Bogart. Uh, you, I hope you get your cookie, you know, for being such a, such a brave boy. Oh, we've got uh, Unico 2. It doesn't make her arguments any less valid. You don't need to be a fan of video games to say that the damsel in distress trope is overused in video games. Oh, and this, this is a brilliant one. Snorkel, of course. Uh, okay, so first up, I'm not a fan of games or anything, but I'm a fan. I can't even do it. Uh, the second sentence is, I'm a female, I'm a gamer. I'm a female gamer, of course. Of course. I, I'm not even going to do, you know, snorkels. <laughs> but uh, what really floors me about this one is the third paragraph. So while it's clear that this Anita person is not being honest in all these interviews, I'd actually pick the one where she says she's not a gamer in front of a bunch of her peers to be the lie. Bravo, snorkel. I mean, this level of stupidity is, it's in a category of its own. If, if, the, if being a dumb motherfucker were an Olympic event, you would hit the gold. I mean, Reebok and Nike would be having you do commercials, Snorkel. That's how fucking retarded you are. Ugh, yeah, straight to the point, it's Zephyrus, who fucking cares? Yeah, use my proper pronouns, it's Zephyrus, welcome to NeoGAF. If you don't call me my proper pronoun, you getting banned. Oh, and of course, that, uh, that thread on NeoGAF, it's locked. I, you know, 
What were you expecting? Five replies, shut it down. And this has just been a sample, a, a small smattering of the posts that are out there since this video came out. And this is, these are all from video game sites, The Escapist and Rock Paper Shotgun, uh, Penny Arcade, uh, stuff like that, NeoGAF, uh, any, any video game related website you could think of. If you find a thread there in their forums, if they're discussing it, you're going to run into this. And it's not a minority opinion. It's almost, you know, it's almost 50-50. And that's the craziest fucking part about this. I mean, right now in the industry, we have a few crucial problems. One of them is the journalists. And I'm doing air quotes around that because half of the people who write for video game websites don't have journalism degrees. They've never worked in actual journalist. Uh, they've, they've never worked uh, in an official capacity in journalism. All right, running a fucking blog isn't journalism. I'm sorry, it's fucking not. You, you can have that debate between the fourth and the fifth estate, and that's, that's great. But brass tacks, at the end of the fucking day, they don't have a journalism degree. All right, they, they haven't, you know, interned anywhere that's worth a shit. And so you've got all these people who are interconnected on Twitter and Facebook, and they spread this shit around. And that's bad enough on its own. But if gamers, the people who consumed what they wrote, if there were pushback from the majority of people who are into games, it would get shut down. But the reason it's not getting shut down and the reason it keeps spreading are people like this. So here's Anita. She's been caught. She has been caught. It's a fucking con job. There's too much evidence now. Her own words, damn her. Her own actions in the past, damn her. The people she associates with, damn her. And it just isn't enough. For them, that will never be enough. They will constantly shift the goalpost. They will constantly change the issue. It's not her fault. It's somebody else's fault. And why are you attacking her? Are you afraid of her opinion? No, I don't give a shit about her opinion. She's a fucking con artist. That makes me dismiss her opinion to begin with. All right? Uh, you want to bring up the issue of uh, sexism in games? You better find somebody who's got a little more credibility to do it. Because she has no credibility left. And you can't say that, oh, you're attacking her instead of the issue. She's the one who brought it up. That's what the threat is about. It's about her being a con artist. Learn to separate the fucking issue. And yet, they just they just don't care. They refuse to acknowledge they got screwed. The, the people who gave her that money have gotten fucked over. Completely fucked over. She's released, what, two, three videos in a span of a year now? Do you think, and that, uh, those were parts of the first video, right? So, I, it really, she was going to do, what, 13, 14? I have no idea. You're never going to see the, it, it's never going to happen. She's never going to finish it. She doesn't care. Now, she doesn't mind going to speaking engagements where she's getting paid to do that. Oh, she'll talk and talk and talk about whatever fucking shit she gets paid to talk about. And, you know, uh, game developers who want to try to get good PR with the uh, social justice scene and the uh, LGBTQ LMNOP fucking group, uh, they'll have her come in. You know, Bioware, or BioWare will talk to her. EA will have her come in. They're going to fucking adjust Mirror Ed or Mirror's Edge 2 based on her. Think about that. She's influencing game development. This isn't a hypothetical. She is literally influencing game development. A person who doesn't like video games, who admits she doesn't play video games, who is more interested in putting forward her bullshit social justice uh, agenda and conning people out of $160,000. That's the person who's going to decide what a good game is and what a good game isn't. And are you kidding me that people are going to defend her? These are the people that are allowing this shit to continue. It's not just the people putting forward the agenda. That's one problem. It's not just the journalists, yeah, again, air quotes, at Kotaku and other fucking sites like that that uh, push it for clicks. That's another problem. The real fucking issue, the ones that are allowing this crap to constantly fucking continue, are the people you just saw, are the people on those forums and on those websites who have influenced the community, who have, you know, ingrained themselves and allowed, you know, the shit to flourish. And go look, you know, it, 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 they, they control the conversation is what I'm trying to get at. And that's the fucking problem. Uh, a good example of this, uh, a giant bomb. Uh, when Ben Kuchera was having his little shit fit uh, with the Forbes writer, Eric Kane. So Ben, uh, wa you know, he's writing all this horrible shit on Twitter, talking about getting Eric Kane fired, right? He wants to get him fired because he doesn't like his opinion. And there's a bunch of blowback. People are like, you know what, uh, Kachera, you're a faggot. That's, you're over the line, you're a fucking retard. 
So he gets all the shit flung at him. He finally can't take it anymore. He goes to Giant Bomb. And there's a thread talking about what's going on between him and Eric Kane. And he actually makes an account. And he says, hi, I'm Ben Kuchera. I want to tell you my side of the story. And, for, you know, I'll give the community credit. For the most part, they told him to go fuck himself. But what do you think happened to that thread, right? It gets going. Ben's getting a lot of shit. And people aren't buying into what he's saying. And here comes a fucking mod, a brony mod, and they lock the fucking thread down. The best part of that is you get an achievement on Giant Bomb for the first time you have a conversation with a mod. Ben got that conversation achievement right before the fucking thread got shut down. And it just goes to show you, these people get positions in a community, they kiss ass, that's how they that's how they get these positions, you know, they become mods, they're community figures, they've had an account for five years, and they set the tone. You go to NeoGAF and you talk about, uh, you know, sexism or racism or transphobia, and, you know, you don't use the proper pronouns in the PC language, you're done. You will be banned, your thread will be closed. You go to Giant Bomb and do it, you're done. You will be banned, your thread will be closed. Try it on, Kata or try it on Kotaku, or Rock Paper Shotgun, or any other fucking site. These people are an infestation. And this is how dumb they are. They're suckers. I mean, they are suckers. You know, I'm split between hating them for what they're doing to my hobby, right, because they're ruining it, and wanting to just get rich off them, because they're that fucking stupid. I could make it up. I could completely blow smoke up their ass, and they would fucking love it. I could tell them that men are evil, that white people are the devil, and that, uh, you know, anything with a penis is a rape machine, and it's ruining everything they love. And they would throw money at me. I mean, they w I'd have to go to the hospital. I'd have so many concussions from getting hit by all the fucking uh, wads of money. They just would chuck at my fucking head. And, uh, you know, I could come out a month after that and say, you're all retards, I, I conned you. And they would sit there and say, he nope, he's a great guy. He didn't con us at all. He's fighting, the, he's fighting the patriarchy. He's fighting the machine. That is how dumb they are. And it just, it floors me, man. It floors me that these people have a right to exist, that they breathe the same fucking air that I do. That you could present them with any amount of evidence, and it just is never enough. It is never enough. They fall back onto their fucking, you know, this this form of argumentation, this sophistry that they love so much, where they just can't fucking admit they were wrong. They have to go and regurgitate shit they uh, read on Reddit or Wikipedia and start screaming out fallacies and ad hominem, ad hominem, straw man, straw man. You know, that's that's their favorite retort. And it just, I, I just, I want to murder them. I just, I want to kill them. I can't take these people anymore. They just are driving me insane. And it was, you know, it was one thing when it didn't influence gaming, but it does. Anita is influencing gaming. And she, it's obvious she's a con artist. And if people aren't willing to fucking accept the evidence that is literally right in front of them and say no more, what, you know, why even game then? It's done. We are fucking finished. Anybody with an agenda can come forward now. Any agenda at all. I mean, you know, I don't like it because of what's being put forward, but pick something you don't like. You know, uh, think if it was somebody else not fighting for, you know, equal representation among sexes in video game for some reason. Think if it was some uh, ultra fucking conservative. Some ultra fucking conservative Republican who wanted to do, uh, you know, uh, video games about abortion rights. You know, oh, uh, well, let's, uh, this video game doesn't talk about how evil abortion is, and there's nothing talking about Jesus. We need to, Halo is a terrible game. There's no mention of uh, God's son in it. Y you know, like, imagine that. I imagine watching games go through that kind of a transformation. It's fucking crazy. And it just it just keeps feeding on itself. That's, that's the, the craziest thing about it. You've got these journalists, you've got these people with this agenda, and then you've got all these white knights, these betas, uh, that are just desperate for uh, belonging to something and being accepted and being part of the group. And they just, they end up feeding on each other. And to the point where it gets so polluted and so screwed up, how do you undo it? When games like Gone Home that can be beaten in 48 seconds have a higher rating on Metacritic from journalists and gamers than a game that's actually good, what what do you do at that point? When you've got people like uh, Total Biscuit on... Um, on Twitter saying that Grand Theft Auto 5 is a terrible game because there isn't a well-written female character in it. And, and, and when we've reached this point, what can we do anymore? These people have ruined this hobby. They have taken something that is meant as a form of entertainment and they have strangled it. They've smothered it. 
and all their baggage and all their psychological bullshit and they just couldn't leave it be. They just couldn't let people play a video game and have fun. It had to have a deeper meaning. It had to be related to their fucking uh, rights causes and their life's goals and ambitions. They took something that was fun and meant to entertain and they have destroyed it. And the people I've shown you are just a sample of the mentality that's out there. They're on every website. They're a member of every community. It doesn't matter if it's an anonymous one or one where you have a user profile. You're going to find them on Reddit and you're going to find them on V. They are everywhere. They are a fucking plague on gaming and they will be its undoing. People talk about a crash coming because of uh, incompetence on the part of companies. It'll either be that or it'll be this. But gaming is going to die and these are the people that are basically holding it up so somebody can cut its throat. Congratulations.